Boyton Beach Living pros and cons coming at you right now. Hello, welcome to the channel, Life in South Florida. My name is Joseph McFarlane. If you haven't already, please go ahead and take this opportunity right now to click the subscribe button below, and don't forget to ring the bell that's right next to it so you can be notified whenever I drop brand new content about what it's like to live in sunny South Florida. If you didn't know, I am the broker owner of Reform Realty, South Florida Homes and Luxury Estates, and as much as I love to make these videos, I would love it even more to be able to help you with all of your real estate needs. So the information you see popping up below is my direct contact info. I am the actual person who will be answering your calls, responding to your texts and emails. If you have any questions at all with regard to these videos that you've seen or any questions specific to real estate, never hesitate to reach out and ask. Also, I'm interested to know what you think. So feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you very soon. One of the special things that you're gonna realize about this channel is that we do not pull any punches. I actually go out of my way to research each of these topics individually on Google and many other sources, including YouTube, and I try to compile the most accurate data with no nonsense and no fluff and bring it right to you so you can stay informed and hopefully entertained. So today we're talking about pros and cons of living in Boynton Beach, Florida. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so first up, we're gonna talk about proximity. Living in Boynton Beach, Florida, you are relatively close to almost anything that you might want to do. For example, three hours north, go and visit your favorite mouse, Mickey Mouse at Disney World. Approximately three hours northwest, you're at the world famous Busch Gardens Roller Coaster Park. If you wanna drive three hours south, you're into the Florida Keys and you're surrounded by major cities. 30 minutes north, West Palm Beach, approximately 40 minutes south, Fort Lauderdale, approximately 45 minutes to one hour south, depending on traffic, you're in Miami Beach. So relatively speaking, the proximity of Boynton Beach is actually very good. However, at the hyper local level, most people in Boynton Beach would agree that there's not much to do around town. Now, I wanna be careful how I specify this because Boynton Beach definitely has some things to do. There are some great restaurants, there are some great breweries, and there are some great things in terms of nature walks and things to do with the kids, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about in the video later on. But most people say that, hey, if you really wanna get out of Boynton Beach to do something a little bit else, a little bit more, they do agree that they journey outside. So whether it's West Palm Beach or Palm Beach Gardens, or they go south to Delray Beach, that's kind of where all the action is in terms of restaurants, nightclubs, shopping, etc. So. Proximity, it's great. It's located near many major cities and many major attractions. However, at the hyper level, they do have decent fun spots, but if you wanna turn it up and get a little bit more, chances are people who live in Boynton Beach travel outward. And that's what's first on our pros and cons. Second up on our pro and con is gonna hinge directly off of what we just got finished speaking about in terms of proximity. Boynton Beach does have some excellent restaurants. I'm gonna talk a little bit about them right now. However, I want to let you know that they also are very limited on the selection of restaurants. It's very few and far between. If you take, for example, a city like Del Rey, there's 100 restaurants and half of them, 50%, 50 restaurants, are top notch. Boynton Beach, very, very short list. For example, you might wanna check out Two George's, which is intercoastal dining, absolutely beautiful or Banana Boat Restaurant, which is also intercoastal dining, and it's absolutely awesome. Two great restaurants right on the water that you should definitely check out when visiting Boynton Beach. Also, Boynton Beach has some pretty cool breweries. Check out Copper Point, Do South, and Nobo. That's N-O-B-O. -O. Very cool scene if you're a beer drinker or if you like cider, and I'm pretty sure they have other adult beverages that you may enjoy too if you're not a beer drinker, but if you're into something a little bit more fun, a little bit more different, these are definitely places to check out and they are ranked among South Florida's best. However, 
the limitation is in the amount of places to go. So restaurant pros, yes, they're there and they're great and the location is wonderful and there are things to do, but the restaurant cons is that we're pretty limited on the quantity. And that's something we hope to see different in the future. Number three on our Boynton Beach pros and cons is going to be cost of living. When you compare Boynton Beach cost of living to the national average, you are going to be shocked to find out that it's approximately 10% higher than the national average, which quite honestly is not that bad considering when you compare what Boca Raton, which is approximately 20 minutes south of Boynton Beach, is 20% higher than the national average. So all things considered, when you're comparing apples to apples, Boynton Beach, 10% higher, national average, but Boynton Beach is 10% lower than the average cost of living in a place like Boca Raton. Also, if you like hanging on to your money, guess what? South Florida as a whole, as a state, no income tax, baby. We only have a sales tax. So if you compare us to places like California and New York where the taxes are astronomically through the roof, guess what? You're gonna benefit by having a pro of a much lower tax rate, which puts more dollars in your pocket and that makes us happy. Taxes, <laughs> taxes, beautiful, lovely taxes. <laughs> so overall, cost of living is lower in Boynton Beach, and because of that, it's a pro. Number four on our list of pros and cons of living in Boynton Beach, Florida, what life is like, is going to be the weather. The weather is probably the most obvious. Guys, let's face it, the weather right across the board in South Florida is absolutely phenomenal. It's probably the top reason why people move down here. So what you can expect is wonderful warm winters. And by warm winters, what I mean is the temperature is approximately 70 degrees January and February. Every now and then the temperature will dip down below 55 degrees and Floridians will put their scarf and hat on. It looks kind of silly and usually Northerners make fun of us. But quite honestly, after a couple days of a cold front at about 55 degrees, the temperature bounces back up to 75 and it rolls right into spring break. And before we know it, it's 85 degrees. Summertime, it's 90 degrees which is hot and humid, which brings me to my con about the weather. A lot of people can't hang when it comes to the Florida heat. So right now, as of making this video, the Florida heat's approximately 90, 92 degrees, super humid, it is uncomfortable, but if you have a nice AC and a nice pool, and you're okay with trading beautiful 75 degree weather in February for some scattered showers and some heat in the summertime, let me tell you, I think that's a pretty good trade off. But wait a minute, don't forget we have storm season. Now storm season should not be confused with hurricane season. Storm season is June, July, August. Hurricane season is September, October, November. What happens is this, the cold front mixes with the warm front. And when they come together, they spin around and they create hurricanes. Now, here's a fun fact. Typically, hurricanes that happen in September, October, November are ranked category one, two, three, four, or five with five being the greatest, most dangerous, and one being the least deadly. Now, a lot of people who live in South Florida are not originally from South Florida. So when they see that a hurricane is approaching South Florida on the news, it's very common for them to get really scared, upset, run around like crazy, go to the Publix and buy as much toilet paper as possible and batteries and canned food and buckle down for the World War Z. And I think many of you people will agree that the media seems to have that effect on people. But here's a fact. I've lived now in South Florida for 18 years and I've been through at least five hurricanes in my life. All of them were category one, two, or three. One of them may have been a category four when it finally came through. And as a general rule of thumb, Floridians will tell people that category one and two are really not that bad. You get lots of rain, some wind, and some minor flooding, depending on where you live, of course. But for the most part, category one and two is pretty easy street. When it gets scary is when it's a category two out in the ocean with a projected path headed for Florida with the potential to build into a category three or four. That's when it gets scary. And believe you me, the media will extrapolate that and make you think that even if it is not even close to that. But if it sells more tickets to the Wolf Show and you're watching, guess who's winning? They are. Either way, if a category three is approaching Florida, I would highly recommend that you take it seriously. Make sure you stock up on the right supplies. Make sure you have the right hurricane protection. If you have small children, or if you're a little bit older, you might want to get out of Dodge. Hurricane category number three is really not that comfortable to be around. Even if you're safe throughout the storm, the after effects of the storm and not having power or not being able to get water or not be able to get toilet paper, it's a pain in the butt. 
So I do recommend if it's category three or higher, you might want to get out of Dodge if you're not comfortable with hunkering down. Number five on my list of pros and cons and living in Boynton Beach is the school system. Guys, I told you, we don't pull any punches on this channel. No fluff, no nonsense, not here to make friends. We're just here to give you the info and all the info, nothing but the info. And of course, I love your subscription. So if you haven't already, take the time to click the little subscription box below. Don't forget to ring the bell. It's gonna notify you whenever I drop brand new content on this channel, what it's like to live in South Florida. Please go ahead and do so if you haven't already. So the school system is pretty simple, guys. It's a major hit or it's a major miss, all right? No sugarcoat, it is what it is. Boynton Beach does not have the reputation of a very good school system. And if you're somebody who works in the school system, I'm not sorry, it's a fact. Google it, look it up, take my word for it, it's fine. And the truth shall set you free. It's not the best, they're C rated, they're B rated. I do know that there are some places where they're D rated, but for the most part, it's a, it's a, C, it's a B, C school system uh, in terms of the public sector. Now, do not let that deter you from moving to or staying in Boynton Beach, Florida. I know many people who have moved to Boynton Beach, Florida and school systems don't pertain to them. Either they don't have children or they themselves are a long time finished with school, like they're retired, or they choose to send their kids to a public school or even homeschool, which is an excellent option, by the way, and I think it's the best option, homeschooling. More on that in another video. Either way, the pros and the cons regarding schools in Boynton Beach is a pretty good hit or miss, depending on which side you decide to be on. Am I sorry for telling the truth? No, I'm not sorry for telling the truth. Always tell the truth, no matter what you do. Number six on my list of pros and cons of living in Boynton Beach, Florida is the safety. Guys, you can take my word for it right now on this video, or you can Google it, but there are some shady areas in Boynton Beach, in the city of Boynton Beach. There are super shady areas. Do not recommend you go through there, but here's the thing. Again, do not let it deter you from living in or visiting Boynton Beach. Do not misconstrue what I am saying here because every major city in South Florida, from Jupiter all the way down to the Florida Keys has a shady area within the vicinity. Just use your better judgment wherever you are, wherever you're driving through, who you're hanging out with, and you'll be just fine no matter where you are in Boynton Beach, Florida, or in South Florida for that matter. But there are some statistics that would cause a reason for concern, but again, within a particular price point in the right community, you're gonna be just fine in Boynton Beach, Florida. Some pockets are safe, some pockets are questionable, and it's up to you to decide and I think we all know how to make those discerning decisions. Number seven on my list of Boynton Beach pros and cons are the snowbirds. That's right, I said it. I'm talking about you, the New Yorkers, the Canadians, the people from Chicago or Seattle, or wherever you're from, you're snowbirding it, you're bringing it down. You have no right to talk. Stand to down, it. sir. No, I will not stand down. You will stand down. I will not stand down. You will stand down, or you will be working security in a retirement home in Boynton Beach. Remain calm. All right, in case you haven't figured it out, I'm originally from Long Island, New York. I moved here approximately 18 years ago from the date of the making of this video. Love my family and friends in New York, but I do not like the weather, and that's the number one reason why I ended up moving here to begin with. That's also for another video. With that said, have you ever been at a stoplight somewhere in South Florida, and you're waiting for the stoplight to turn green, and you glance down for a second just to check your Facebook or maybe your YouTube channel feed, and all of a sudden you hear out of nowhere, bah, 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 and you look up and you realize the person behind you, it's driving Miss Daisy and she's laying on the horn in her Oldsmobile. And so what do you do? You say, oh, okay, sorry about that. You put your phone down and you start driving forward only to find out about a quarter mile down the road that the driving Miss Daisy that just laid on the horn ever so abruptly is north of 95 years old and she has a New York license plate. Okay guys, cause that's not kidding. That's actually true. That happens in South Florida. There's something strange about Northerners in general, but New Yorkers, and there's a lot of New Yorkers down here. And it's very common to say that they are kind of rude and not the best of drivers. And that's one of the cons in terms of snowbirds in South Florida. Now, of course, on the flip side, there's many pros of the snowbirds that come to South Florida. A lot of folks from up north who come to Florida are retired. 
They are wealthy, they're affluent, they bring their money, they bring their business, it stimulates the economy, they boost our housing market, they renovate properties, they appreciate the value of homes. Typically, they have very high standards in terms of service, which keeps local businesses on their toes and continuing to provide better service. So I do think it's a fair wash to have our New York friends come down, to have our Northerner friends come down, to stimulate the economy, to stimulate the service standards, and also remind you to get the heck off the phone when you're supposed to be driving and watching the traffic anyway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you made it to the very end of the video, and the last item that I'm gonna share with you on Boynton Beach pros and cons is going to be the amazing fishing and boating lifestyles. Now, when I first started this video, I told you that the list of pros would be far too long for me to list everything. And the cons, quite honestly, are very few. I mean, we only talked about, what, maybe five or six of them? that are pretty consistent with most of Florida, and some of them are specific to Boynton Beach by itself. But all in all, Boynton Beach is an awesome place to be, and I think one of the best things about Boynton Beach is the boating and fishing lifestyle. We have some of the most awesome beaches, fish, fishing charters, scuba diving, snorkeling, windsurfing, kiteboarding, kayaking, pier fishing, the list just completely goes on. And if you don't do any of those things, guess what? You can still take your boat through the intercoastal, out to the ocean for an awesome cruise with your friends. In fact, there is another channel on YouTube, maybe you've seen it before, but they have made the Boynton Beach Inlet famous. Check out these boats as they come crushing through the Boynton Beach Inlet into some rough surf. Pretty entertaining stuff, huh? And so to cap it off regarding the pros, we have some awesome water sports and maybe some challenging waves to say the least when you go through the Boynton Beach Inlet. Be sure to be careful and know that the person that you're with has some experience before you take on and tackle some of those rough waves. That looks pretty crazy. All right, well there you have it folks, the pros and cons of living in Boynton Beach, Florida. Please click the subscribe button below. Don't forget to ring the bell. We try to do things differently on this channel. We don't pull any punches, we tell it how it is. I research all the other channels and Google just to bring you the calculated, compiled data to save you time and hopefully keep you entertained along the way. I wish you the best, take care.